between these two pairs. The one time that they've met previously was in the group stage of last year's Super Series Finals in December, and it was the Koreans who won on that occasion in two straight games. It's with home support. I wouldn't be surprised if many people feel that, in fact, it's the Japanese pair who are favourites to win this semi-final encounter. Of course, there were semi-finals last year, was this Japanese pair. Lost out to the now European champions. Yeah, European champions a year ago, too. Ruta Yul and Pedersen from Denmark. Oh, it's a nice idea, but she's overdone it. Now the Koreans want the shuttle changed. Antoine agrees. Court. And it was that cross court smash from the left handed Jang Ye Na that played her partner into trouble. Do open up the court if you go for those cross court angles. Oh, beautiful. Calm as you like. Just play the defensive shot cross court into the open space. Oh, screw that one. I wasn't sure about that. Concerned. Right. Yeah, that's better. Service over. Williams doubles. No. Very much question of trying to involve the net player. Don't expect to hit too many winners from the back of the court. advantage at the mid-game interval after only six minutes of play. Oh my goodness, that's nigh on the perfect start for the Japanese pair. No wonder they're nodding in approval to their coaches. Yeah, lovely little block. This final smash, taking a bit of pace out of it. Just going for placement. Very pace, very angle. Three. Oh, one, 20 seconds. Oh, placement oh, one, too. 20 seconds. Will contribute into forcing your opponents into error.
Oh, that was a bit wide, I think. That's short. Yeah, not what it deserved. But it was the clever no. placement of the smash. Look, aiming just to the left of the left-hander. And she was committed to the backhand defence and therefore very awkward to try and play a defensive shot from her forehand side. Oh, well taken. Goodness me, that was good. Mizaki Amatsutomo. Absolutely reading the situation. And just brushing across the line of the shuttle there to make sure that she didn't hit the net. That really is wonderful play. Oh, this is quite extraordinary. I said right at the start that Jang Yenar and Kim So Young had had indifferent results in 2014, but at the moment they've just been outclassed. No wonder they're having a little talk about what they should be trying to do. So they need to get themselves with the belief they need to play themselves into the match before the start of the second game. Oh, this is extraordinary. And it's not as if the Koreans aren't experienced at this stage of a Super Series tournament. This is their fifth Super Series semi-final. Although they've never progressed past a semi-final stage. attack in between the two players makes opponents hesitant who's supposed to take one down the middle they both left it for the other clearly in Takahashi after that rally. Obviously, and there she is looking back towards that sideline. Obviously unsure in her own mind whether she should have played it or not. I was expecting from the start. Nice. Clever. Short. and a long, long, hard look after a gruelling rally from Takahashi. Oh, goodness me, what a good call by the line judge. That was long by a whisker. We do, of course, have the challenge system in place here on our centre court, which means that 
Each pair has the opportunity to challenge a line judge's decision. And then Hawkeye will adjudicate for us. Per match, though. Unless you're right in your challenge, in which case you keep them. Oh, what a angle. Absolutely superb from Matsutomo. player Mamatsu Tomo concentrated really on her singles she won a silver medal at the 2010 World Junior Championships Most of that singles final to a certain Arachin of Intonon who of course is now a senior world champion Service over. we're trying to defend her title in Seven. August in Copenhagen 70. Technically, being able to play this, look how low it was. It was the vision to see that's where the gap was. Great spatial awareness. Uh, it's gone long. So, second time of asking, and the number three seeds from Japan. 21-9 in 17 minutes. Well, that is the sort of start they would have dreamed of. speak to the players individually. The Korean coach, I have a feeling that may be Lee Kwon Won. He used to play women's doubles with Lee Hua Jung. Of course, and silver medalists at the Beijing Olympic Games. Coach will have enough experience to know what her players should be doing.
second game. Love all. Hey. So here we go with game number two. Number three seeds from Japan having made the perfect start. 21-9 that opening game. Matsutomo and Takahashi. Clever smash again from Takahashi. Turn of serve, but the Koreans just seem disorganized at the moment. Perhaps that's a bit harsh and perhaps not the right word, but they don't seem to have that understanding of who's supposed to go in for which shot. There's another problem that hesitation for the first push down the center of the court, the hesitation from Jang Yen Ah. Championship partner, Am Hae Won, with whom she won a silver medal last year. I know she's had her injury problems, so of course Jan was forced to find a new partner in the interim period. But if Am Hae Won is fully fit, I think they're without question in my mind, the previous partnership was better than this partnership. Well worked. Service over. One, four. Twenty-four years of age, the left-hander. Very good mix player too. She is. I have to say, in the past, I've been critical of Matsutomo and Takahashi. But they play too defensively, too willing just to defend and lift the shuttle. I think they've become a lot more positive, I think, when I've watched them recently. They've got a new found belief, a new willingness to try and be a little more aggressive. do have to try and involve the net player a little bit more as they did in that rally if they want to win this semi-final. It's gone wide, yeah. Much, much more positive, more proactive in that rally. Let 
Interesting, this Japanese pair last year, I'm looking at their results, 16 tournaments played and only three times did they live up to their seeded position. So by their own high standards, last year Matsutomo and Takahashi underperformed. And I think the same thing is happening this year as far as the Korean pair are concerned. So young was just getting a bit of a telling off there from the umpire. I wonder what that was about. That's ah! uh, clever. Nine, yeah, good variation. And I do think that Matsutomo especially is more willing now to take the half chances at the front of the court. Even the threat of going forward to the net, I think, is a good tactic in doubles. Oh, as soon as I say she's more of a threat at the net, she hits the low serve and backs off. Yeah, what do I know? Disappointing body language by the Japanese pair, and considering they're a game and up in the second, shouldn't be showing your opponents that you're in any way dispirited. Yeah, because that's what happens when you start making unforced errors. Now, just two points in it. Korean pair, and my goodness, doesn't that put a different complexion on this second game, and therefore the match. Concerned, aren't they, the Japanese coaches? Well, we've got a wonderful crowd in here this afternoon, well over 4,000 people. And I'm told that's record numbers for semi finals day here at the Onyx Open Japan. Wow, they do love their badminton here, and I'm sure the success of the Thomas and Uber Cup teams. This last month has been a big influence 
All the spectators wanting to come and watch their Nine, star four, players. And rightly so, too. Oh, good return, sir. at 9-4. They do still have the advantage of the game interval. So it's only two points. Should have perhaps been a lot more, but I suppose all credit to the Korean pair. I thought the Japanese pair certainly went strangely negative. Fans here really trying to lift the home players. And I have to say, there was far more urgency in the body language of the Japanese coaches, Keda Masuda and Kei Nakajima. In fact, one of the coaches is not Keda Masuda. I do apologize about that. him as a player he was tremendous yeah they're trying to play the shuffle back to the net and get the net player involved but that was a nice idea from Takahashi just goes to show in sports you can't let up for one moment at the elite level of play opponents will grasp any half opportunity that they're presented with year at the Yonex Open Japan that a home player won a title at their home event for the first time ever. Everyone assumed if it was going to happen it was going to be a women's doubles pair. In fact it was a 16 year old qualifier, Akane Yamaguchi, who set the records and I wonder if that's going to open the floodgates and more Japanese players will win titles this year. Brilliant. Saw that Zhang Yena, the left-hander, was using the crouch defence. Look how she's so committed to that forehand defence. Hit it towards the right shoulder. It's bound to be a winner. Good to 
friends. Yep, there we are again. Across the body of the left-hander. Goodness me, I think that hit four or maybe five smashes initially at Kim So Young. As soon as they switched it and hit across the body of the left-hander, they got the winner. Five-point cushion now. She's disappointed with that. A little practice serve after making the error. Good, landed in, and that's good control because of the drift in this arena. Shuttle flying a little bit faster, coming towards us, and that is once again a very, very good call by the line judge. Hardly seen any errors by line judges this week. Superb team here, doing an excellent job. Starting. Oh, the ebb and flow of this second game. Oh, Koreans don't want to change it. Japanese pair do. Koreans saying we're winning with this one. We want to keep it. Uh, the psychological games at an elite level of sport. I'm sure would see, love to see a couple of quick points here for the Japanese pair just to steady their nerves. But that's a beautiful shot. Goodness me, why weren't they varying their attack a little more like that earlier on in the match? Slicing across the feathers, creating extra spin, and it means that the shuttle dies so much quicker. And also. Racket head has to come through quickly because it's a glancing blow on the shuttle. And therefore, opponents think it's going to be a power 14, smash. 16. Great. Ah! Very, very clever from Matsutomo. Stepped into her defensive shot, saw her opponent was moving forward to the net. And that wonderful little hold and flick the shuttle over her head. Now, she made an error on her last serve, did Matsutomo. What's she going to do here? Will she flick? No. That's confidence for you. Brave. A little nod of approval between the two Japanese players towards each other. And I have to say, the amount of success they've had while attacking and pressurizing Zhang Ye Na, much more success smashing on the left hander than on the right hander. Yeah, that's a nice smash. Service over. Then the softer one. Oh, that's lovely. 
Bye. Yeah, the variation in pace once again, having the desired effect. Two points away from a first ever appearance in the final of their home Super Series event. Good serve. Slightly hesitant when the smash down the centre of the court works. We call channel attack. Well, they've been playing together for just about a year now, the Koreans. Formed their partnership at the Australian Grand Prix Gold last year. Right. Match point opportunities. First time of asking. And the number three seeds, Mizaki Matsutomo and Ayaka Takahashi, have surpassed their performance from last year. A beaten on semi finals day in 2013, a year on, and they're through to their first ever final at their home event. What a good performance, 21-9, 21-17 in 42 minutes. And Japan guaranteed finalists tomorrow. It was a clever serve, instead of serving to the tee, it was more towards the right shoulder of Kim So-young. And they will be absolutely delighted with that, and rightly so. Their fifth Super Series tournament final awaits tomorrow here in Tokyo. They are still looking for their first ever Super Series title, but they are one step closer to achieving that. Matsutomo and Takahashi safely through to tomorrow's final. 21-9, 21-17.
That's the first of our semi-finals completed and a first win for Japan in today's semi-finals uh, day. And for Matsutomo, well, she's going to be back on court with the fifth semi-final this afternoon. There you can see she's in the mixed doubles as well. But what a fantastic performance by the number three seeds, Misaki Matsutomo and Ayaka Takahashi, uh, beating Jang Ye Na and Kim So Young in two straight games. Now, I don't want to jump ahead of myself, but it is possible that it could be an all-Japanese women's doubles final. Because let me tell you, the other half of the draw, which will be on the adjoining court, will also be a Japan a Korea semi-final battle in the women's doubles. And it is possible that uh, Reika Kakiwa and Mayuki Maeda, the number four seeds from Japan, if they were to win that, then Japan would, of course, be guaranteed a title tomorrow on finals day because it would then be an all-Japanese women's doubles final. But as you can see, we've got plenty more to look forward to. Women's singles up next, the Olympic champion against uh, the Asian champion. And then we've got uh, Li Chong Wei, the defending champion, in a repeat of last year's final. This year, of course, at semi-final stage. Well, the fans here in Tokyo, it is a magnificent crowd in this afternoon. They thoroughly enjoy their badminton. And I can tell you, they're very knowledgeable about their badminton too. Over... 4,000 people here. There's been entertainment for them earlier on, crowd participation, fans able to go down on court before semi-finals got underway and hit shuttles with some of the Japanese national squad players. It really is an occasion all the day long. So, of course, Japan, as I say, have representation in the men's singles semi-final, the men's doubles semi-final, and also the mixed doubles semi-final. So this next match we've got coming up between the Olympic champion Li Shui Rei and the Asian champion Sung Jae Hyung, the only match on our centre court this afternoon that doesn't involve home players. And I was saying a little earlier what an impact the Thomas and Uber Cup had had and, of course, with Japan taking the silver medal in the Uber Cup, the Women's World Team Championship, and Japan lifting the Thomas Cup for the first ever time. They only become the fourth ever nation to win the Thomas Cup, along with Indonesia, the most successful team in the history of the Thomas it's Cup, totally. having won it 13 times. And, of course, the other two nations, Malaysia, who Japan beat in the final last month. And... China and the other two teams. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the semi-